What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of our NFL Deep Dive, where we're going to look at power rankings, depth charts, fantasy football, and Vegas predictions for all 32 NFL teams. Today, we've got the 31st overall Cleveland Browns. It's a team I have a little lower than some people are going to have. There's a lot of optimism, perhaps a little too much around this team. This is still the team that barely won a game last year. It took a San Diego Chargers team rolling into Cleveland in a giant ambulance with all the injuries they had for Cleveland to get their first win. So I think this team is still going to struggle. They lose Terrell Pryor and Gary Barnage, so a lot of production in the passing game to replace. The running game should be better, but if they're trailing, that's really not going to matter a whole lot. Defensively, the addition of Miles Garrett and some other pieces make this interesting, but there's still some serious holes in this defense, and it's overall just a team that's going to have to learn how to win as a young group. So now taking a look at the depth chart, Cody Kessler looks to be the starter heading into the year. A lot of people seem to be kind of high on Cody Kessler. They like his ability to get rid of the ball accurately and his poise under pressure. I saw some of that, I suppose, but this is still the same quarterback that ran out of the back of the end zone for a safety in a preseason game. He has potentially the upside of that game manager type. I'll bring up Andy Dalton just because it is Hugh Jackson's scheme coming over from Cincinnati. So maybe Cody Kessler can show some things and become this team's quarterback. I don't see it happening. I think this team is going to be in a bad spot towards the end of the year and in a position where they need to take a look at Deshaun Kaiser sitting there. Second round pick, not a fan of that pick. I don't think it really makes sense in the scheme of things with this current class coming up being a very good quarterback class. I think they're going to have to take a look at Kaiser. I don't think they're going to like what they see. So I think this team will be looking at quarterback should they get a top five pick next year, which I think is very likely. And then Brock Osweiler, I don't see getting any playing time uh, unless there's some emergency situations. And Kevin Hogan, an intriguing player who made some highlight plays last year, more of a scrambling quarterback than anything, however. Moving on to the running back, I love Isaiah Crowell. We'll talk a decent amount about Crowell during the fantasy section, but I think Crowell has a big year. I think he's really matured, especially in the last year, ever since the incident with the Dallas police and the, the tweet. I think he's really showed some maturity coming up on a contract year. Duke Johnson, I'm not a huge fan of. Really a similar play to Lamar Miller, in my opinion. A lot of people are kind of higher on Miller coming out of Miami. But not really any plus traits as a running back. Can definitely make some people miss. Show some shiftiness, some decent vision, but I don't think he would ever hold up as a lead running back. They bring in Matt Days in the seventh round. Similar to Duke Johnson, a smaller guy. Probably closer to the Theo Riddick spectrum, more shifty than anything. And then George Atkinson the running back out of Notre Dame coming over from Oakland and maybe the guy that would see some more carries if anything happened to Isaiah Crowell there. At receiver, Corey Coleman really impressed me. I have kind of a stigma about Big 12 players in general, especially receivers and quarterbacks, but really showed to be a well-rounded receiver, great route runner, such a good athlete. And the only concern with him is the injuries. He had a few last year. He didn't play a whole lot. And then already this offseason rolls over a football, gets hurt. I have a feeling the Browns are kind of hiding something there, maybe a punctured lung or something. But what do I know? And then Kenny Britt sitting there as sort of the veteran presence should be sort of a mainstay there. I'd rather see Terrell Pryor on this depth chart, honestly, but I guess I understand the direction bringing in a veteran into this very young group and a guy that will just be a good buddy for whoever's playing quarterback. And then all these guys that Cleveland sort of threw middle draft picks at, Ricardo Lewis, Richard Higgins, Jordan Payton, no one really stood out to me. I don't think these guys are in the long-term plans at least for starting receivers on this team. James Wright does intrigue me, however. Gets released from Cincinnati. A really deep receiving core. 
and he gets to buddy up with Hugh Jackson, who he knew in Cincinnati. And I could absolutely see James Wright emerging as the third wide receiver on the step chart. At tight end, I like David and Joku. We haven't really seen the rookie tight end produce at a high level since the Rob Gronkowski and double homicide Hernandez year. But this is about a, as good of a situation as any. They release Gary Barnage with a lot of faith in David and Joku to produce. So we will see. Definitely has. Uh, great ball carrier ability once he gets the ball in his hand. Great athlete. Randall Telfer and Seth DeValve, pretty decent athletes for backup tight end types. Players that could step up should anything happen to Njoku, but I wouldn't expect that. And then this offensive line is a pretty damn good group. I'm going to start with Cameron Irving because he is a major concern for me and a big reason why I'm not as high on this team as a lot of people because if he can't hold that right side edge and he struggled at center, right tackle is an even harder transition. If he or maybe Sean Coleman and uh, Roderick Johnson, young players, if they can't hold the right side of the edge, you're only as good as your weakest link, especially with the offensive line. So it's not going to matter that you bring in Kevin Zeitler and J.C. Treader if your right side of the line is just collapsing. So we'll see if he can make that transition. I would not be optimistic about that. I think we'll see a lot of Cody Kessler feeling the pressure off the right side. But they do have an awesome guard combo in Kevin Zeitler. Some good depth at guard in John Greco and Spencer Drango if anything happened there. J.C. Treader will be an awesome impact. Just, uh, I believe he is a Ivy League guy. I want to say he's from Cornell. Just a smart pass protecting uh, center who's going to have everyone in sync much better than they were able to get last year after Alex Mack left. And then obviously Joe Thomas, just an absolute stud. Moving on to the defense, that'll be switching to a 4-3 scheme with defensive coordinator Greg Williams. Miles Garrett to be the feature of this defense. Uh, but like he said, he can't do it by himself. It'll be Emmanuel Ogba on the other side, who I like Ogba transitioning to being this team's complementary pass rusher with Miles Garrett as the feature. I think that's a much better role for Ogba, and he could honestly cement himself as this team's secondary pass rusher. As for Miles Garrett, uh, such a dominant athlete, obviously that 99th percentile of, of human beings in terms of athleticism. Can he add that finesse to his game? He talks a lot about the impact Von Miller has on him coming out of Texas A&M. So I would not be surprised in the least if Miles Garrett became an elite player in this league, top 10 type of talent. As for the rest of this D-line, I'm not nearly as optimistic. I like how the edge is playing out with those two guys, but Danny Shelton, I like him as a player, but making a transition from a true nose tackle to what will be a multi-dimensional D-tackle where he'll be asked to stop multiple gaps and even pass rush a little bit. Sitting there at north of 340 pounds, I don't know if that's going to be doable for him. Definitely a candidate to be traded, maybe not this year, but after this year. And then the rest of these guys are basically going to be fighting for snaps. Caleb Brantley, a potential steal there in the sixth round if he can take care of those off-the-field issues. And then you got guys like Jamie Meter and Desmond Bryant, the veterans, should definitely be in the rotation. Carl Nassib will probably move in and out uh, of the edge and the inside. Xavier Cooper and Larry Ogunjobi, the third-round pick this year. All those guys should be moving in and out of this D-line. I think there's definitely going to be struggles there. I think teams are going to be able to run uh, pretty much at will against this group, but we'll see. There's definitely some upside there with guys like Brantley and Ogunjobi, who's a, more of a raw athlete guy. At linebacker, I guess I like this group a little more before the Demario Davis for Calvin Pryor trade. But really looking at it, it does make sense. Greg Williams did not use three linebackers often at all in um, L.A. <laughs> Keep wanting to say St. Louis. But we'll see a lot of Jamie Collins and Christian Kirksey on the field. I love that combination. Jamie Collins, 
coming back into a 4-3, so scary, so dynamic, will really just be flying all over the field. I expect him to be the best player on this defense this year. Uh, and then the depth is pretty weak. Tank Carter, sort of a veteran presence, but has never really had a starting role in the NFL. Uh, Dominique Alexander on the depth chart there. But I do think we see a ton of Jabril Peppers coming in and playing that bandit linebacker, bandit safety, whatever you want to call it. Uh, OurLads.com actually lists him as a third starting safety. So I absolutely think Jabril Peppers is going to have a, a kind of a dynamic role. This is a very athletic group of linebackers that uh, if the D-line can come full circle, that's when we're going to be starting to talk about the Browns as a almost uh, getting towards that dominant defense level, but obviously a long ways to go there. But the potential is absolutely there. And then the corners, I love the top of this depth chart. Joe Hayden, terribly underrated in terms of Madden. He's like an 81 in Madden, which is an absolute joke. I talked about this stat in my last uh, playthrough, but Joe Hayden was graded out as the third best corner in terms of opponent receiver average points. And that's just a great stat. I mean, receivers struggled against Joe Hayden last year. And people didn't take note after he's had a few bad years, you know, quote unquote bad. When you don't have a pass rush, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're Patrick Peterson. It's going to be damn hard to play corner. So with potential pass rush now, Miles Garrett and maybe Ogba takes that next step. I think we'll see Joe Hayden reemerge as an elite corner in this game. And then uh, Jamar Taylor gets a decent sized contract. He probably falls somewhere between that 30 and 40 spot in terms of cornerback rankings. So a solid number two corner, a uh, young guy. We'll see if he can continue to grow. And then they do bring in Jason McCourty. I expect him to play a decent amount in the slot, depending on how much Jabril Peppers is playing in that role. And then uh, Breen Bodie Calhoun was a rookie last year. Played decent, uh, surprisingly decent. I saw a lot of him at the University of Minnesota, being from Minnesota, and he played better than I thought he would as a rookie in the NFL. And then Marcus Burley coming over from Seattle and Howard Wilson rounding out the depth chart, a fourth round pick uh, among some other undrafted rookies that probably won't make uh, the roster there. And the safeties, the rest of the safeties, we talked a little bit about Jarrell Peppers, but Kelvin Pryor will probably be the starting strong safety. They'd make the trade to get him. Would not be surprised at all if he lost that spot. They got guys like Ed Reynolds, Ibrahim Campbell, and then mid-round picks from last year, Trey Caldwell and Derek Kindred. All these guys are going to be competing. Prior by default is going to start, but I think he's a liability in coverage, and he's not as good in run defense as people think. He was probably my biggest faller throughout the year in terms of my Madden ratings, just continued to unimpress there on the Jets. But I think we'll probably see Ibrahim Campbell start as the free safety, but I don't really know. Uh, none of these guys really impress me, but someone is going to emerge as the starting free safety among this group. And it could even be Jason McCourty. We'll see what they'd end up doing with him. So that rounds out the look at the depth chart. We're going to start talking some fantasy now. Uh, starting with the quarterbacks, none of these guys are ranked according to Fantasy Football Calculator, so I won't spend too much time on them. But Cody Kessler, you'll probably take a look at late in a two-quarterback format. He'll probably start about 12 games. Like I said, I think Kaiser comes in towards the end of the year. And Kaiser, you'll probably – Think about in a dynasty format later in the draft. I like him more than like Christian Hackenberg, who we talked about in the last episode. And then the rest of these guys, you're just not going to consider at all. At running back, I love Isaiah Crowell. I promised I'd talk about him more. Just that five-star pedigree as a high school recruit off the field issues goes to goes from, I think it was Georgia to South Alabama. I'm probably wrong about one of those, but uh, just... Could not seem to stay uh, steady anywhere, but finding a home in Cleveland, really maturing, coming up on a contract year. If you're taking Crowell, you're hoping that Cleveland is in games because he's not a dominant receiving back, and Duke Johnson is much better in that role. So if this team 
is trailing in a lot of games, his value is not going to be where it's sitting right now at 14th in terms of running backs, early third round. But if they are staying in close games and being more competitive than last year, then Isaiah Crowell is going to return top 10 running back value, in my opinion, and could really emerge as a dominant running back. I mean, physically, he is similar to Todd Gurley. So a ton of upside in Crowell. I love him in like the third round, late third round. He is getting a lot of hype. He might even be going in the second round uh, in like 12 team leagues by the time we get there. Uh, but that's enough time on Crowell. I think you want to do what you can to get him, but don't go too far. And then uh, Duke Johnson, I'm not a fan, but he's going 59th among running backs in the 14th round. You know, he is probably the clear handcuff if anything happened to Crowell. And he's going to have a role as a third down back. He's going to catch probably five to six balls in most games, especially when this team's trailing. So later in the draft, if he's sitting there, I like him more than a lot of handcuffs just because he's going to actually have a role without injury to the starter. And then in super deep dynasty formats, you're going to look at Matt Days. And if anything happened to Isaiah Crowell, just keep an eye on George Atkinson. But I wouldn't expect too much there. At receivers, Corey Coleman going 39th. It seemed about right to me just looking at some of the guys going around that area but uh 10th round for Corey coleman it's late enough where i don't have to worry about the injury thing it's if if you get burnt by him it's not the end of the world but he could definitely start to creep up if he becomes healthy more towards the season and then kenny Britt actually not ranked surprisingly in the adp rankings so he's going after wide receiver 62 I like that value a lot, especially with Corey Coleman's injury history. I mean, seriously, if something happened to Corey Coleman, Kenny Ritt's going to be the number one receiver on this team. He's probably going to be seeing uh, double-digit targets in a lot of games if that happened. And uh, Kenny Britt could be looking at being the red zone threat for this team. So kind of a deep flyer guy in Kenny Britt. I definitely like him towards the end of your drafts. Could see up to five to six touchdowns, maybe about eight to 900 yards. A guy like there. And then I mentioned James Wright. Uh, this would only be with an injury to Britt or Coleman. Uh, and barring him actually <laughs> making it up the depth chart here. Uh, but just an intriguing guy uh, to keep an eye on. Uh, the other three guys, the rookies from last year, not really considering any of them. At tight end, David Njoku, sitting as the 16th tight end. I think I really like that value. He's going after Kobe Fleener, Evan Ingram, and Julius Thomas. I think he's just going to have a bigger role in his own offense. The touchdowns probably won't be there. Um, maybe four touchdowns for Njoku. He is going ahead of Eric Ebron, who I really like, but uh, I like Njoku later in drafts. He's currently going about the 14th round, which is definitely good value for me. And I will run through the Vegas odds now. Not going to be making a lot of bets on the Browns, but 200-1 to 1 to win the Super Bowl, tied for last. Uh, I definitely won't be having any action in that. Uh, neither will I with the 33-1 to 1 division odds. It's a pretty good division. The over-under for the Browns is set at four. I would take the under on that. Uh, I think this team gets to three wins. And I like that it's four because even if they do get to four, which is probably... This team's upside, barring them really clicking on defense and winning six or seven games. But I like it at, at four. They could get to four, but you at least get your money back that way. So that's going to do it for the Browns. I hope you guys like uh, the format I'm going with. Let me know if you want me to change up anything. I'm, I'm kind of going with the flow here. And Browns fans, hit me up what you think about this. I'm very responsive on Twitter, at TFG underscore football. I'd love to talk fantasy if you guys have any draft dilemmas or anything like that. Uh, so that's going to conclude this video. We'll see you for the next one in a few days. Peace out, everyone.